it is my pleasure to welcome all of you who have joined us so far to this special webinar titled This Freedom Rider, Welcome to My Prison Cell. It is the title of a brand new documentary film that focuses on the experiences of our friend and our colleague and our teacher, Rabbi Phil Posner. Uh, I will say a few more words about you, Phil, in just a few minutes, but before doing so, uh, permit me to offer just a few introductory words uh, about this program and the American Jewish Archives. I am Gary Zola, and I have the privilege of serving as the executive director of the Jacob Rader Marcus Center of the American Jewish Archives. And I also serve as the professor of the American Jewish Experience and Reform Jewish History on the historic Cincinnati campus of Hebrew Union College Jewish Institute of Religion. You know the college is the oldest continuously existing institution of higher Jewish learning in North America. And it is my pleasure to welcome you this afternoon to this special webinar sponsored by the American Jewish Archives. And we want to uh, begin by welcoming all of you to this wonderful event. And if any of you are joining us for the first time, uh, welcome, and we hope this will not be the last. We also want to acknowledge and thank our institutional partners who graciously agreed to co-sponsor uh, this afternoon's webinar. I'm speaking about the Jewish Community Relations Council of Cincinnati, the American Jewish Committee, the Cincinnati chapter, and of course, we're particularly thrilled and honored to have as our partner this afternoon, the Religious Action Center of Reform Judaism of the Union for Reform Judaism. And uh, we will uh, be introducing uh, our partner in just one moment. Now, for all of you who are new to these webinars, the American Jewish Archives, which is located in Cincinnati on the HUC campus, it was founded in 1947 by the distinguished historian and pioneering scholar of American Jewish history, Dr. Jacob Rader Marcus. It just so happens, friends, that today we are commemorating and marking Dr. Marcus's yard site, the anniversary of his passing. And over the past 75 years since this institution was founded, the AJA has grown steadily and has today become the world's largest freestanding research center dedicated solely to the study of the American Jewish experience. The AJA's fundamental mission is to preserve and to promulgate the history of Jewish life in America. And now we're so honored and pleased to have Ms. Yolanda Savage Narva, who is the Assistant Vice President of Racial Equality racial equity, diversity, and inclusion for the URJ and the Religious Action Center. And she has graciously agreed to join us and be part of our panel this afternoon. Welcome, Yolanda. For those of you who have not yet met Yolanda, you should be interested in knowing that this is a very experienced human being. She is uh, a, an alumna of a Jew V Nation cohort. She's the past vice chair of the Commission on Social Action. She's a member of the board of directors for the Federation of Greater Washington, the Capitol Jewish Museum, which is an institution, Yolanda, I know quite well. And of course, the historic Sixth and I synagogue in Washington, DC. Uh, I wanna call attention to the fact that Yolanda is a graduate of Tougaloo College and holds a master's degree in education from Jackson State University. So since we're gonna be focusing on Jackson uh, today, that is a city I dare say you know quite well, Yolanda. Uh, now, before I introduce uh, Rabbi Posner, uh, let me just say a couple of words, technical words uh, about our webinar. Uh, you will uh, 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 not be seeing uh, all of those who have joined us uh, for the webinar. You'll just be seeing the panel. And in a few minutes, you'll be, we'll be watching the video uh, and uh, 
you you can uh, control that from uh, your own uh, 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 computer or laptop or whatever. Uh, I, I want you to know that live captioning is uh, has been turned on and enabled. Uh, we've had that request, and so people there are people who need it. If you don't want it, you can turn it off yourself, or if it's not on, you now can uh, turn it on because it has been enabled. And at the conclusion of the webinar, there will be a few brief and important announcements, especially for those of you who may want to acquire this documentary in order to use it in your own settings. So please don't jump off prematurely. Tomorrow, uh, you all will be receiving a follow-up mailing so that you can remain in touch with the AJA and receive notification of our upcoming virtual educational programs on the American Jewish experience. And of course, a recording of the webinar will also be available tomorrow on the AJA's website and also on HUCJIR's special online learning website. And I'll remind you of that and how to access that at the conclusion of our webinar. So now, finally, let's begin without any further delay. Rabbi uh, Philip Posner is an alumnus of the Hebrew Union College Jewish Institute of Religion. He served as a congregational rabbi for nearly 40 years in communities such as Atlanta, Georgia, Riverdale, California, Chattanooga, Tennessee, Auckland, New Zealand, uh, San Juan, Puerto Rico, and in every one of those locales, he has always been a light for social action, social justice causes, and interfaith activities. All of us who are familiar with Rabbi Posner know that. He's particularly proud of being a co-founder with a friend, Jane Fellman, of the Rabbinic Network for Ethiopian Jewry, which uh, is an, an organization that's succeeded in encouraging so many rabbinic colleagues over the years to become involved in efforts to help Ethiopian Jews. Some of you may, uh, there you have, we're, we're having an illustration as I go through. And some of you, not all of you may know that he's also the author of a very popular cookbook titled Food for Thought, Character and Soul, Recipes and Blessings Included. Now, the purpose of our webinar today and why we have uh, focused on this documentary is to bring us back to 1961 when then student rabbi Phil Posner joined the Freedom Rides. And these, as most of you know, were uh, uh, rides that were designed to uh, bus riding uh, organized by the Conference on Racial Equality that were designed to help integrate uh, transportation facilities and restaurants. So uh, Rabbi Posner went down in that summer and was a member and a participant in the Freedom Rides. And he, in Jackson, Mississippi, as a result of his efforts to integrate those facilities, he was uh, incarcerated and, uh, and uh, punished by having to spend uh, 39 days in Parchman Penitentiary in Mississippi, which is about 200 some miles, I believe, from Jackson, which is where he was arrested. So uh, uh, it's a pleasure, Phil, to have you. And uh, before we watch the, the uh, documentary that was made, which is about 35 minutes, and, and that, then we will come back together to talk about it, uh, Phil, maybe you can tell us a little bit about the documentary, how it came into existence, and maybe set the stage for us to uh, view this documentary. Well, first of all, bienvenidos. Uh, uh, welcome, everybody. Baruchim Yabayim. It's a, such an honor to be uh, doing this with my dear friend, and I'm, I'm so grateful. Uh, basically, uh, as uh, some of you may know, I'm almost 84, and uh, a year, over a year ago, Congressman John Lewis left, uh, went to the other side. And John Lewis, a very well-known social activist and an incredible human being, 
was arrested the same day that I was in Jackson, Mississippi. When, when John died, I decided that I wanted to tell my story. And that's basically how, how it evolved. So I was very fortunate that I found um, some movie producers, uh, editors here in Mexico, Jorge Conseco and his wife, Hanna. Uh, you'll see their title in, when the film begins called Filmo. So with them, uh, I wrote the film, the documentary, and they helped me put it together. Uh, and it's been a lot of fun. Well, terrific. So uh, with that introduction, I would love to uh, have us all view this documentary. I've had the opportunity to see it, but uh, it now is our time so we can view it as a community and then be able to talk about it. So uh, Lisa, Frankel, who's behind the, she, uh, uh, the scenes today. If, Lisa, if you could be, uh, uh, begin our film and everybody will uh, 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 listen in. Uh, uh, friends, I wanted to organize this uh, webinar when I, uh, uh, Rabbi Posner was nice enough to send this link which we now have at the American Jewish Archives because I was taken by uh, the value of this very personal story and how as a teacher myself and, uh, and a preserver of our heritage uh, to the best of my ability, uh, how uh, meaningful uh, this particular uh, effort was in trying to reach out to future generations. Uh, one has to just stop and think uh, how valuable this will be in 20 years, in 30 years, in 40 years, when, uh, when uh, this kind of very personal uh, accounting and detail uh, is going to be available uh, uh, it, it's really irreplaceable. Today, in, um, in the memorial service that we had for Dr. Marcus, I played his voice uh, delivering a Nord Nation sermon in 1974. Mm -hmm. And listening to it were rabbinical students who were not born when he passed away. And there's nothing I could say or anybody could say to deliver that man as he was, other than the voice and the pictures. So Phil, kol kavod for what you've done. Uh, I, think, uh, I think if I could, I'd like to turn this over to Yolanda for a minute. I, I'm going to show you all some documents in a minute, but we've been watching the screen a long time and I thought maybe we'll have a little conversation first. Uh, and by the way, Yolanda, uh, Rabbi Ambassador Saperstein is listening because he's already sent me a correction. Uh, you know, uh, uh, and I'm used to that at the Hebrew Union College. I can barely say anything without being corrected. So uh, Rabbi Saperstein pointed out that when I mention the Religious Action Center, I have to be certain to, to do it correctly, which is the Religious Action Center, which is of course jointly sponsored by the Union of Reform, for Reform Judaism and the Central Conference of American Rabbis. And uh, so your vice presidency uh, uh, has to be set into that context. But Yolanda, I'm very interested in your re uh, reaction and comments at this point. Oh, I, I just have to take a pause and ask everyone on the, on the screen, on the webinar, to just take a deep breath for just a moment and really process what we've seen. Um, it, it's so powerful to me and it sends so many emotions, um, you know, in multiple directions for me. I've seen those images before. I'm from the South. I'm from Jackson, Mississippi. Mm. Um, I, I ran a, a program for young people that took us to the deep south every year. And we met with Freedom Riders and we, we were intimately in touch and understanding this history. And so it's very 
powerful for me to see. Every time I see it, it you know, it, it still um, brings up a lot of emotion. In addition to that, seeing the young people also brings up some really strong emotions for me because I know that those young people were who you were um, 54 years ago. And to have that kind of courage and holy boldness to go down to the South, to be a part of something like this that's so big that we're reaping the benefits of today is just um, amazingly powerful for me. So Rabbi Posner, I want to personally thank you for your sacrifice, for your courage, for your bravery, and for sharing this with all of us. It, it, means, it means so much. Thank you. Uh, Phil, maybe you could tell us a little more about, you know, uh, I'm going to be showing in a minute a letter your mom wrote to Rabbi Nussbaum. And uh, I don't know if all the listeners know, uh, there's, there's actually a very wonderful article on Rabbi Nussbaum written by some guy named Zola. And, uh, <laughs> and so I know a lot about Rabbi Nussbaum and what you said a minute ago is absolutely true. Uh, it, it was a very difficult rabbinate for a whole variety of reasons, not the least of which is what you spoke about. But, but I'd wonder, if, uh, Rabbi, if you would tell us a little more about, you know, it, it's one thing to be brought up in a house, and this comes through in your mother's letter that, you know, with folks who really were attuned to ethics and, and for whom uh, the ethical mission of, of Judaism was so important, but that, to take that next step and actually sign up to take this ride, uh, could you tell us a little bit more about that decision process? Did you meet some people that told you about it and, and, and then you decided you wanted to do it or uh, did you do this on your own? How, I mean, I wanna remind everybody that this is, as Rabbi Posner said, this is not 1965. It's not after Dr. King got uh, received the uh, Nobel Prize. This is 1961, and uh, this is this is the first summer of the Freedom Rides, and so uh, uh, tell us about that, Phil. Uh, how did that happen? Uh, I was a student at UCLA, uh, and there was a flyer on some wall that said uh, Congress of Racial Equality looking for people to go on a freedom ride. I saw it. I, uh, I think, oh, and then it said there was a meeting. I went to the meeting and I met Bob and Helen Singleton, who you saw in the movie. And uh, I just decided that I was gonna go. Uh, and when I look back on it, I can't tell you that there was this lot of, you know, uh, awareness, as I said in the movie, I was pretty pretty ignorant about a lot of the stuff that was going on. But as I said, uh, hopefully, expressed in the film, I, I knew I had to do it. it the, the injustice was just so overwhelming. And I have to say that uh, people like Al Vorspan, Alava Shalom, and, and David, and Jonah, and so many wonderful social activists that we have in our movement. In my day, it was Al Vorspan uh, who was motivating you know, me to, to consider these kinds of things. And so I, I suspect that the answer to the question is there was kind of an unconscious awareness that I need so we I need to do this because there has to be change. Uh, well, I'm gonna ask another question, but I wanna also invite all of you who are listening to not to hesitate to please put any questions that you would like asked of Rabbi Posner uh, or of Yolanda into the chat because we're, we're, we're harvesting them right now and we'll be glad to, to pose them. Uh, I, I wanted to ask uh, this question, were you involved in our youth movement uh, uh, when you were at synagogue and, uh, and uh, Nifty or, or, or camp as you were growing up as a teenager? And did that, if so, did that have any uh, Larry, thanks for asking that because colleagues my age generally, you don't find too many reform colleagues who have not who were not involved in the UAC uh, camp movement. So absolutely, Saratoga Swig, 
I was a camper, I was a counselor, I was a rabbi on staff. I was meeting people uh, uh, who so motivated me, uh, great rabbinic leaders, uh, Roland Gittleson, Allah Shalom, and there's so many people who were out there doing that stuff. So yes, being involved in NIFTY, I was involved in SCIFTY, Southern California Federation Temple Youth, but most of all the camp movement, there's no doubt that you know, my parents, but the, the, the camp movement definitely influenced uh, my motivations. Thanks for asking. Oh, you're so welcome. Now, I see a few people are putting hands up like you want to ask a question. Don't do that. Just write into your chat that uh, you want to ask a question. Ask your question and we will pose it. That's how that's how we we're, can do we're, it. We're having a technical difficulty with the chat. Oh, so what shall we do, Lisa? Um. You want to uh, here? I'll put in my email. Somebody people can email me. Okay. All I right. meant to mention Rabbi Jean Borowitz, all of us shalom, who came to camp. I still remember so very significantly. All right. So all of you who are wanting to ask questions, uh, Lisa is now putting into the chat her email address, and you can ask your questions there. In the meantime, uh, Yolanda, before I show some documents, I'm wondering. Uh, if uh, if uh, you have any questions of your own that you want to pose now, or I'll just go to the documents. Sure, I, I do have one question for Rabbi Posner. I'm curious. You you've done this documentary. You lived this. You you did the documentary. When you watch it, um, is there something that is there another memory that comes up for you? Is there something that you know that strikes you that hadn't before? And I'm sure you've shared. Um, this story uh, before, but I'm I'm just curious about that. Every time you see it, is there something different that that you take away from it? I, I think that uh, you know, just watching it again, I haven't really looked at it that often. So I I, I have to admit, I feel amazement at uh, what so many of my fellow students in those days did, and the the moral courage of Hank Thomas and and so many wonderful human beings who put themselves out there. And I'm so grateful to that. Then again, that's why I, I mentioned John Lewis so so admirably. So I think that there's that aspect, but also the, just the kind of wonder, wow, did I really do that? You know, so many years ago, it's kind of amazement. Uh, and, uh, and lastly, uh, a feeling that I was so fortunate you know, in terms of doing it, but also surviving basically un, un, untouched, unlike, you know, people like Schwerner, Sweeney, Goodman, and, and so many other people who died because they cared enough to, to be involved to try to make a, a difference. And that's why it's so important now that we respond to what's going on and the evil that we see around us now and, and be involved and say, there were these, there are all these great leaders and we can do great stuff too. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, I I do hope that all of the educators and rabbis who are uh, listening will consider how you can use uh, Rabbi Posner's documentary in an educational setting. Uh, I, for example, we're always today in the American synagogue, we're looking on Martin Luther King Day Sundays or Shabbat when you have religious school, uh, 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 here's an opportunity to use that. Uh, uh, of course, we always we also have uh, Rabbi uh, Joachim Prinz's powerful two-minute uh, prayer speech given at the March on Washington in 1963. And so uh, these are ways in which educationally we can make good use of this material. I'm, I'm really great. I'm, I'm grateful for you saying that because I forgot when you asked me earlier about what are the motivations was my my son Micah, my older son, teaches uh, ethics uh, and prophets at, at our congregation, my old congregation in in Santa Cruz. And Micah used to invite me. And part of the reason I think that I decided to do the film was because I knew that our religious school students and public school students need to know about all this stuff. And so that was part of my motivation, as you oh, asked me earlier. Yeah, Phil, and, and as some of us know, I think many of us know, if, if, we, if you mentioned so movingly Anne Frank, 
uh, when you go to the Anne Frank house today, the technique uh, that's used is exactly the same technique you, mm. you uh, presented, meaning at the end of this, of your visit, uh, uh, youngsters are asked this, these questions. Uh, what would you have done? You know, what would, uh, you know, it's, it becomes personalized that way. And so uh, uh, it really is effective, uh, a, 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 a very effective. Uh, now I wanna let everybody know that we're going to end our, our webinar between a quarter after and 20 after. So I don't want you to think for a moment that we're not uh, sensitive to time. I know that we're getting close to uh, 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 going home time in the, on the East Coast or we're uh, driving and so forth. Lisa is collecting questions, but before we ask some of those questions, uh, let me share my screen. And uh, I'm going to uh, hopefully, uh, you are now able, uh, Yolanda, are you able to see the, uh, uh, my, uh, my uh, uh, opening slide? and? You see our co-sponsors listed there. I want to show you all, uh, just so you know, that the American Jewish Archives is going to do its part to preserve stories like the story of Rabbi Posner, the story of the rabbis who were incarcerated overnight in St. Augustine, and uh, so many of those who, uh, who have contributed to uh, uh, the important work, the ongoing work of making our world a better place. Not the least of which is to mention uh, Ambassador Saperstein who has just recently given us all of his historical papers and they will soon be available. But I wanna show you a couple of things that those who are still with us that you might find interesting. So first of all, uh, I'm going to show you uh, this is actually the letter that uh, Rabbi Posner's mom and dad wrote to Rabbi Nussbaum, who, as Rabbi Posner points out, schlepped 260 miles uh, on his own. And his congregation, as the rabbi pointed out, did not want him to, this was his day off, and did not want him to do this. Uh, not all in the congregation, but many. And so he received no uh, reimbursement from the congregation. This all came out of his pocket, the gas money and so forth. In fact, uh, there's uh, documents in the collection that indicates that uh, when, uh, when, uh, when uh, he was asked, Rabbi Nussbaum, how can we help you, uh, Rab uh, uh, Al Vorspan and Rabbi, the late Rabbi uh, Balfour Brickner asked him, he said, the only thing I want you to do is don't make a, uh, any news on this. Just mm -hmm. if you could help me offset the gas money, that would be a help. And he kept all the checks that he received from rabbis. So there's actually documentary evidence of which rabbis actually made a contribution mm -hmm. so that you, Phil, could be visited. And uh, I, I, I don't have time today to go into all of this, but... Uh, your mother praised him so, and I'll show you uh, just uh, 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 one little part of the letter where she says, she says, your mother writes, believe me when I say that I admire your courage more than I do that of my son and his friends who face only the loss of 39 days while you face the social pressures of your community and your service in it. I have faith that God will reward you for your mitzvot. So you can really see the kind of family that Phil uh, came from. And uh, I just wanna also show you, uh, 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 you know, uh, this is a touching letter and, and, and uh, this is the signature and so forth. I, I just blew up the letter so it's easier for you to see. And now I want to show you that Rabbi Nussbaum kept all the letters from mm. all the parents. He had a whole file on them. Mm. And it tells you how much it meant to him. It was, in my opinion, as a researcher, it was the sustenance that kept him going. Because mm. with all the battles he had in his community, the, the letters like your mom's letter praising Rabbi 
uh, uh, Nussbaum and telling him he was a hero and a mitzvah doer, he kept every one of them. And wow. I, I can believe how much it meant to, the, to him given the difficult circumstances, as you mentioned later on, several years later, his synagogue was bombed and his, and his uh, home was bombed while he was sleeping in it. And finally, the last document, and I, I have a million of them, you know, I'm like Al Jolson, I have a million <laughs> of them, but, 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 uh, but uh, this, believe it or not, is Rabbi Posner's sermon, a chapel sermon that he delivered at the end of the summer after he returned. And, uh, and I'm not going to show you the whole sermon. It's very, it's a lengthy sermon because uh, he really recapitulated on his experiences, but it was a, a it was a rabbinic sermon because he, uh, he uh, uh, places it in, it's what you might call a, a, a homily and, uh, and look how he ends. This is how Rabbi Posner ends and it shows you 60 years later. <laughs> 50 years later, Phil, you're, you're still singing a same song. He says, once Isaiah challenged the nation of his times, he is still challenging us today to correct the predicament of this nation. How then can we do anything but open our eyes to and do everything possible to fight for them, that them that sit in the darkness, in a land where all is supposed to be, quote, light. And then he says to open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, to bring out them that sit in the darkness out of the prison house. This must be our task. And uh, uh, Phil, uh, I don't think you said anything all that much different just a few minutes ago. And finally, just to show you what a what a fabulous documentary uh, uh, warehouse we are, we even have an early version of this sermon. Yeah. And I don't know if you I don't know if you had uh, uh, an advisor who went over it with you, Phil, but you can all see that uh, uh, Rabbi Posner uh, was given uh, or or rewrote uh, uh, several days before he delivered it, uh, and, and uh, that's interesting too to the historian. Uh, how you changed it and and uh, and perfected it. So uh, uh, there you have it, everybody. And uh, I just wanted to show everybody uh, how uh, how we're uh, augmenting this important work by preserving the documents of the American Jewish experience. I'm going to stop sharing. And uh, Lisa, if you have a few questions, let's spend a five minutes asking some questions or so, and the rest will. We'll deal with uh, 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 online. Lisa, welcome. Thank you. There's a couple of questions about um, your imprisonment right up front. So um, one person asks, did anybody prepare you for the fact that you could possibly get arrested? And if so, how did they do that? And what reason did they give to arrest you? Well, uh, the answer is yes. And I thought that I kind of dealt with that in the in the documentary, but absolutely, that's why we had to attend uh, uh, seminars uh, and uh, confront uh, possible violence that was going to happen to us. So absolutely, CORE took this very seriously, and CORE expended tremendous amount of money and uh, personal involvement uh, in training us to face what might come our way. Great. Some other questions relate to Jews in the South and rabbis in the South. And one of our um, participants said, I was a two-year-old Jewish girl living in Jackson with vivid memories of Rabbi Nussbaum as our rabbi and the bombings that were in the late 60s. My perspective has always been from the Jewish leaders and my parents' experience. Most were not happy with Rabbi Nussbaum, but my uncle always said he was doing a good job. Uh, another person asked, why do you believe that there weren't as many rabbis as you would think in the South participating and helping? That's a really great question because Perry expressed uh, great emotional angst as Gary knows about that very issue. And basically it was because they were afraid. They were afraid that if they got involved, 
they would suffer uh, the consequences of being forced away from their congregation, maybe even violence, et cetera. And uh, that's, that's why there, there's a wonderful book about this, by the way, Rabbi, by Rabbi Alan Krauss. Uh, I think it's rabbis in the, in the movement. Uh, so yeah, basically they were afraid and the pressures were inordinate. And that's why Perry was such a, uh, Eze Gibor, such a, a hero to stand up to that. So yeah, the, the pressures. The last question that's asked has been, I'm wondering how the experience of you being in prison affected your later life, both in your personal family life and your life as a social activist. Well, I'm, I'm grateful for that question because uh, I, I've been asked, well, you know, what did you learn from being a freedom rider? So I, I share this with you that when I got out of prison and I came back to HUC, the Hebrew Union College, I was pretty chutzpahdik because my basic mentality as a social activist was, hey, colleagues, classmates, how come, how come you didn't go do this? So Baruch, thank God, a great teacher of ours, Rabbi Samson Levy, Allah Shalom, called me into his office and said, you know, Phil, I need to talk to you. And he said, you know, the college is really proud of what, what you've done, but you're antagonizing people. Your, your, differ, your, your differentiation between you and them is, is not helpful and, and you need to cut that out. So the answer to that question is humility. That is to say that all of us as social activists need to be involved and need to have, have egos that are committed to making social change. But we also have to be conscious of our, our own self, our, our awareness about our, our own selves. And, and that's called humility. So I'm, I am love and shalom to Dr. Samson Levy for doing that. And uh, hopefully I listened. I'm sure you did, Phil. And I don't think there's a better uh, uh, a point on which to bring our uh, time together to a conclusion. Uh, it, it, that, that was such a beautiful comment. And I think uh, really all of us, every one of us, and certainly all of us in, uh, in the Rabinate uh, uh, should, should listen carefully to what you just said. So before we conclude- uh, Just again, thank you so very much, Gary. You're so welcome. Before we conclude, I, I want to, Yolanda. I, I, I want to thank Rabbi Posner. I want to thank Yolanda and the Religious Action Center for joining us today and co-sponsoring this webinar. And we're so grateful to all our partners, to the RAC, to the JCRC and AJC here in Cincinnati. And I also want to, again, thank all of you who've given up an hour and 15 minutes of your time to be with us today and to participate in the AJA's offering. We're really grateful. Uh, we will continue in the coming year after uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in the new year, that's uh, almost upon us. We will uh, continue to uh, offer educational uh, programming that focuses on the American Jewish experience and the history of the American Jew. And uh, for all of you who are interested in acquiring the documentary to use in any setting that you seem to see that you would uh, deem fit. Uh, Particularly in classrooms. <laughs> yeah, your classrooms, of course, educational and, 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 and maybe in Hillel and in other places. Rabbi, where, where, what's the best way for people to? Well, my website is rabbiposner.com and it's got my uh, email address and I'll obviously be glad to hear from people. Okay, and- Rabbiposner.com. Rabbiposner.com and Lisa, right. tomorrow when the mail goes out, we'll make sure that that's repeated so that you can get it. Finally, uh, my gratitude, our collective gratitude goes to the amazing staff and administration of the American Jewish Archives. All of the people who preserve these records day in and day out and have done so for 75 plus years deserve our gratitude and our admiration. And in particular, uh, as you see how I cannot 
think of doing these webinars without Thank Lisa you, Frankel. 37 years, friends, we have worked together side by side. Lisa is the Director of Educational Outreach and Administration at the AJA and her contributions to the college and to the AJA, AJA defy, defy enumeration. So remember all of you to visit the AJA's website where you'll find a recording as well as you'll receive it in the mail, but it'll be posted. And also it will be posted on HUC's online learning portal, which is huc.edu backslash online learning. So Rabbi Posner, thank you. Yolanda, thank you so much to the RAC, to the AJC, to the JCRC, and to one and all, we are so grateful. I say to all of you, shalom, goodbye, and we look forward to seeing you at the next webinar. Bye-bye.